Enthalpy and Hess's Law. Okay, so we've had a chance to talk a little bit about enthalpy and find out what it is. Okay, and so now we're going to discuss using Hess's Law to determine the enthalpy of a reaction. Okay, and since enthalpy is a state function, the change in enthalpy for a reaction doesn't depend on how those, con those reactants are converted to products. So for instance, we could do the reaction in one step, or we could do it in two steps, or even more, and the bottom line is, is that where we start and where we end, this is the only thing that matters. Okay, so it doesn't matter how we get there, it only matters where we are going from reactants to products, and we're going to get the same delta H reaction either way. Okay, so this change in enthalpy for the reaction is only dependent on two factors, okay? How much is reacting, okay, so the mass of the substance is reacting, and their physical states. Okay, so take a look at these chemical equations and the associated change in enthalpies of reactions that are given here. So pause the presentation and really look at those and try to detect a pattern here. What do you notice about it? Okay, so using this first reaction as, you know, something to compare to, okay, so we see if we have dinitrogen tetroxide and we're making two nitrogen dioxides, that change in enthalpy for the reaction, which remember is the same as the heat at constant pressure, is plus 57.2 kilojoules per mole. All right, endothermic or exothermic? Okay, right, that endothermic on that. Okay, so now the second reaction, all the coefficients have been divided by two. So basically we have half as much. And if we go over here and we look at delta H reaction, we see that this quantity, this change in enthalpy for the reaction is just the original divided by two, just like we did with the coefficients. We divided the coefficients by two, and so we have to divide delta H reaction by two. So bottom line, if we cut the amount of dinitrogen tetroxide in half, then only half the heat is absorbed. Okay, so let's compare the first reaction to the last reaction. So here's our original reaction, positive 57.2 kilojoules per mole. Now, we have taken the products Okay, and we've made them into reactants, and our reactant is now our product. So basically, we, we've reversed this chemical reaction, all right? And when we look over at delta H reaction, we see that it's the same magnitude number opposite sign, okay? So when we reverse a reaction, then the delta H reaction is the original with the opposite sign. So we just changed the sign on delta H reaction, okay? All right, oh yeah, one more thing. Endothermic or exothermic? Okay, so yeah, so in this direction, this reaction is exothermic. Okay, so here's the official definition. So Hess's law states that when two or more reactions are added to give a new chemical reaction, addition of the corresponding enthalpies will provide the enthalpy of the new reaction, okay? So again, this is just another way of saying that whether the reaction is done in one step or two step or five steps, it doesn't really matter. The overall enthalpy change will be the same. Okay, so we have a couple of rules for Hess's Law calculations. These are ways to manipulate equations and the associated delta H reaction. And there are three of them, so here's the first one. If we add two chemical re equations together, then we need to add the corresponding delta H reaction values. So this is one of the, this is a really central one, okay? This is, a lot of times we're going to do this at our, at our last step in a Hess's Law problem, okay? So we're going to add two chemical equations together. So here we have A plus B going to C, all right, and then C plus D going to F. And we're going to add these two guys together to get the overall reaction, okay? Now notice, 
anything that is on both the product side and the reactant side, so I see before the arrow, after the arrow, then you can cancel those out. All right, and these are, they have the same coefficient, so that's why they're completely canceled out. If this said 2C and this was only 1C, then there would still be 1C left over here, but one of them would be canceled. Okay, so A plus B going to C, C plus D going to F, and we're going to cancel out those C's and get our overall reaction here. And then here's the really important part. Now we're going to add these delta H reactions together. Okay, so the delta H reaction for this new reaction here is plus 30 kilojoules per mole, which is just the sum of these two guys. Okay, now this one we've seen an example of already, but here is the specific rule. If we reverse the direction of our chemical reaction, then the sign of delta H reaction should be reversed. Okay, so here we have A plus B going to C as our delta H reaction, and now we're just reversing it, and we end up with the opposite negative 20 kilojoules per mole. Okay, now here's another new one. If we multiply or divide a chemical reaction by a factor, then we need to multiply delta H reaction by the same factor. Okay, so here's an original reaction, C going to A plus B. Okay, and this is negative 20 kilojoules per mole. Now, suppose that we want to multiply this reaction by 2, okay? So we want to multiply the whole thing by 2. That's the same thing as multiplying each coefficient by 2. We're going to distribute that, okay? So now we have 2C goes to 2A plus 2B. And when we deal with our delta H reaction, we're going to multiply it by 2 also, okay? So that it goes with this. Because remember, it does matter how much there is. So this is twice as much, and so twice as much heat is released. Okay, so here's an example calculation, kind of a typical one. Now this is a fairly simple one and a little later on I will do another more in-depth example and post it. Now suppose we need delta H reaction for this target reaction here, okay? And we don't have it so we're gonna, we want to figure out a way to, to get this change in enthalpy for reaction, okay? Now, we do have information for these two reactions, okay? And there they are, and there's their associated delta H reactions. So we want to calculate delta H reaction for the target reaction, that's this one, using this information. Okay, now, the big overall strategy here is that we need to find a way to add these two reactions together so that they match the target reaction, okay? And the easiest thing to do with this is to look at each reaction and one, see if you need to reverse it. So you wanna see if certain reactants and products are in their proper places in your re reactions that you have to work with, okay? And so let's go ahead and look at the first reaction, okay? So here's our target, here's our first reaction. Now. So we, we do notice that nitrogen and oxygen are on the reactant side, okay? And so that's good. So we probably start to think that we're not going to turn this reaction around. Now, of course, we're going to 2 nitrogen dioxide, all right? So we're just going to see, we're going to leave that alone right now, okay? So we're going to leave this whole reaction alone. this just shows what we were just talking about. So the reactants are on the correct side of the equation. So we're going to move on to the second equation. All right, so again, target reaction. Here's our second equation, okay? And so we notice we have two nitrogen dioxides going to dinitrogen tetroxide, and that is on the correct side, the product side of the reaction, okay? So we are thinking, all right, let's just leave both of them alone and try adding them together and see what we get. All right, so again, 
So here's first reaction, second reaction, add them together. Notice that the two nitrogen dioxides cancel out because they're on opposite sides of the reaction. We end up with our target reaction. Okay, so that's crucial. Want it to match at the end. And then we're just going to add up our delta H reactions. Okay, now this example, like I say, is simple. It's just showing some of the basic concepts here. But don't forget that in Hess's Law problems, you can always go back and change your mind. So if we find that our original determination of leaving the reaction, you know, not reversed or reversed or blah, blah, or multiplied by a coefficient, we can always go back and change our mind. Okay? So we've added them all together. We add our delta H reaction together. And we now have the new delta H reaction. Endothermic or exothermic? Right. Endothermic. Okay. So why does this work? And it all comes down to the fact that delta H is a state function. So only in the initial and final states matter, not how we get there. Okay? So the initial state is the moles of each reactant. The final state is the moles of each product. And no matter how we get there, we end up with the same delta H reaction. We could do it in two steps. We can do it in five steps. It doesn't matter. Okay. So using our specific example that we already talked about, so here is what we did. Okay, so we started with nitrogen and oxygen, and during reaction one, we made nitrogen dioxide. And then we took our nitrogen dioxide and made dinitrogen tetroxide. Okay, so this is the all around Robin Hood's barn way. Okay, and here's our target reaction. That's the enthalpy for our target reaction. So again, it doesn't matter whether we get to it this way or if we go directly there, we get the same difference. Okay? All right, so what should you be able to do? Okay? So you want to basically be able to describe for yourself, this is more for you, describe how you can use Hess's Law to calculate the enthalpy of a reaction. Okay? So you're, you're going to want to practice quite a few of these until you get good at it. And you'll figure out your own little system as you try more and more of these problems. And you want to be able to use Hess's Law to calculate the enthalpy of reaction for a target reaction. Okay, so that's that's basically the really big thing in this in this section. You want to be able to use all those rules for manipulating chemical equations in Hess's law. Okay, that's basically what you're gonna ha what you do in order to get to calculating the delta H reaction. And you also want to be able to determine whether the target reaction is exothermic or endothermic from the sign of delta H.